All right. So, now we already saw that changing the angle of attack of flight which the pilot does can make you fly level at various velocities. Okay. So, the lift that you need should be equal to weight and that is a function of only half rho v square s and C l that is there in level flight. So, as the value of v reduces that means, you want to maintain lift equal to weight at low velocities. Then if you cannot do anything else because if the altitude remains same then the density remains same, the aircraft is same so the s remains same. So, the only option you have is your lift will come down, but if you do not want the lift to come down because you want to maintain level flight you have to go for a higher C l. In other words, you must change the angle. Okay. So, the angle of attack at which you fly is a function of the velocity at which you are flying for level flight. So, the aircraft is going to fly at a lower angle of attack at higher speeds, sorry, yeah, and at a higher angle of attack for lower speeds. But you know that there is a limitation, you cannot keep on increasing the angle of attack because you will hit the stalling value. So, that is how limits are imposed. You cannot fly lower than a particular speed because you will stall. So, whether you have power available more than power required does not matter, you cannot fly because you, are, you will not be having lift equal to weight. Remember for level steady flight both conditions have to be met, you have to have lift also equal to weight and thrust also equal to drag. So, you may have enough thrust with you at low speeds to overcome the drag, but you may not have the capacity to maintain level flight. Okay. So, now let us go inside the cockpit and let us have a look at how pilots are going to do this. The pilots do not have any angle of attack meter, they do not have any way of knowing which angle we should fly, they fly with reference. Okay. So, let us see how they do it. Okay. So, essentially for the pilot you have a cockpit which gives you a view outside and in the outside zone there is something called as a horizon. This horizon should be maintained horizontal because if the horizon is changing it means you are not flying level, you are flying at angle, you are rolling. And then there is a nose in the aircraft, now I am talking about small aircraft something like uh, the aircraft used by general aviation aircraft, small aircraft, they will have some kind of a reference point on the aircraft say the nose or there is one more reference point called as a spinner. What is meant by a spinner do you know? See in front of the propeller you always have a small conical projection that is called as a spinner. So, that also becomes something like it, it houses the propeller assembly and you give a nice aerodynamic shape to it because it is the first thing that faces the flow. So, the spinner is a fixed item, it spins with the propeller. So, it remains relatively at a fixed location. So, that can also be my reference point. For the pilot, study level flight will occur when you maintain a constant gap between a reference point on the aircraft, say the spinner or the nose, and a reference point in the field of view or in the horizon. Let us say there is a there is a building or a church which is quite far away. So, if you maintain that gap you are flying level. So, let us see a short video taken from a pilot training manual on how they do it. It is a very interesting video. Straight and level flight. In order to fly the aircraft straight, we first of all select a reference point towards which we will fly. We keep the wings level with the horizon using aileron. We keep the aircraft in balance using the rudder. If the ball were to the right, right rudder will be required. Ball to the left, left rudder will be required to bring the ball back to the center. To fly the aircraft level, we need first of all to select the level flight power. So remember, when you are saying level flight, you also do not want to have a flight like this. It should be straight and level. 
straight study level. Hmm. Technically speaking, a flight which is like this is also straight and level, but that is not what we are looking at. So therefore, the cockpit has an instrument called as a turn and bank indicator, where there is a small black colored ball which is floating in a fluid. And if the aircraft goes banking, then the ball goes outside a small socket. So the pilot brings the ball back in the socket by controlling the ailerons. Similarly, uh, similarly there is a problem with the yaw. Actually, they use the rudder, not aileron. Okay. Similarly, there is a. So you will see that very soon. They will show you a video in Combined flight. Combined with the correct level flight attitude, and that's the distance between the spinner and the horizon. Now, as long as the power is set correctly, and the attitude is set correctly and the aircraft is in trim, the aircraft will maintain level flight, which can be confirmed by reference with the altimeter. So there are three things. You have to maintain the correct power, the correct attitude so that the gap between a fixed object here and in this horizon remains constant and also you have to trim the aircraft correctly. But now my question is many people don't understand the meaning of trimming the aircraft. What do you mean by trimming the aircraft or when can we assume the aircraft to be in a trimmed condition? Can someone define? When is the aircraft trimmed? When the center of gravity is slightly shifted then we just vary the horizontal at the tail horizontal stabilizer by some angle and that is known as trim to make the aircraft. See what you are saying is what an engineer does to the aircraft so that it can be trimmed. I don't deny what you say and that is only one thing that is only a that is only a horizontal trim okay? or trimming in pitch. You do it by adjusting the tail. My question is what is trim? When is when do we say that the aircraft is in a trimmed condition? Yeah, maybe can you answer? So, when all the control surfaces neutral position is maintained. Right. Neutral position. Of Correct. The that means, okay, now let me go one step further. When is the neutral position in an aircraft maintained? So before flight, it is not referred to zero. Based on the flight requirement, control surfaces set at some adjustments. Some adjustments may be up or down. So that initial position has to be maintained. No, again the same thing. See, you are talking from the engineer's point of view. What do you do to trim the aircraft is you adjust the control surfaces to some position. Okay? But my question is not what you do, but when does the pilot feel that the aircraft is trimmed? When he removes the stick, there should not be any, when he leaves the stick, right. it should be strictly conditioned, control Correct. surfaces will be in same same. Yeah, that is important. In a stick free condition, there should be no net moment. That is what I am looking for. In a stick free condition, there should be no net moment. If the pilot has to apply some control forces to ensure that there is no moment, it is not trimmed, it is untrimmed condition. You are forcibly adjusting it. But so, you have a trim wheel in the aircraft, you have trim tabs behind, all that is there. But when everything is done, you fly hands free, the aircraft flies without any net yawing moment, net pitching moment, net rolling moment, unless there are weather disturbances, then of course they will come. Okay? But if it is a stable aircraft, which we will see after a few lectures, it will almost come back. So, from the pilot's point of view, Trimming means removing all imbalances which may be there. Great. So now let us see inside the okay, cockpit. We are now, now going to look at straight level flight. Let us divide this into two. First of all, level flight. To fly the aircraft level, two requirements. First, the level flight power correctly set. Second, the level flight attitude. You can see where the horizon is cutting through the windscreen. That is the position in this aircraft for level flight. If I were to select slightly too low a nose attitude, you can see the horizon climbing in the windscreen, the nose pointing towards the ground and we begin to lose height. If I have slightly too high a nose attitude, the converse happens, the nose pointing towards the ground and we begin to... This instrument is the vertical speed indicator, which we saw in the instrument. And it is not stationary, it is showing some vertical speed, which means the aircraft is going, in this case it is going down. 
Okay, so that should not happen in level flight. Lose height. If I have slightly too high a nose attitude, the converse happens. The aircraft begins to climb. It's climbing now. So neither this attitude nor that too low a nose attitude is correct because we know that at this power setting, that is the correct level flight attitude. All right, let's now talk about straight flight. To fly the aircraft straight, again, two requirements. The first one, to keep the wings level. It's no use having the wings like that, we'll turn. So we've got to keep the wings level to the horizon. And the second requirement is to keep the aircraft in balance. That little black ball needs to be... There you see, now, if you just focus your attention on this instrument here, okay, this instrument shows the aircraft as a reference and these two dashes are the horizontal line and there is this ball which is visible here as slowly moving out. Why is it moving out? Because the aircraft is not level, it is slightly banked towards the right side. So for the pilot, it is difficult to orient in the cockpit which is horizontal. So the pilot looks at this particular instrument, specifically looks at the two ticks at the end of the instrument and the reference line of the aircraft, they should be in the same line or visually appealing will be if there is a small ball here, it should be centered. So the pilot will simply do the controls so that the ball is centered. You will see that now. Be kept central. There, now bring to it. Now confirm that we are flying straight, select a reference point and if you look ahead, I will just lower the nose so you can see it, I have got a beautiful chimney in view. And as long as that chimney remains in my 12 o'clock position, I know that I am flying straight. Further confirmed, of course, by looking at the directional gyro indicator to confirm that we are maintaining the heading we require. So, in a nutshell, that's flying straight and level. Okay, so for the pilot, flying straight and level is a little bit different from the for an engineer. All right. So, what are the objectives of level flight? You have to establish a few things and then you have to maintain. First is you establish the correct amount of power so that your power <coughs> required is equal to power available. You are at the right altitude and you maintain that, okay. And then you trim or balance the aircraft. So after you establish, then you have to maintain it. Because as a function of time, you cannot have sinking or raising. So for that, you have to do three things. One is look outside. Check the reference on the aircraft and in the horizon and maintain a constant gap between them. And look at the instruments in the cockpit, which are going to help you. So now suppose you fly in the night time and you want to fly. Now can you imagine? What would be the requirement for, say, a military pilot? Sir, the, in every case, the horizon may not be straight. It might be in the earth is anyone, right? So, in that case, how the pilot could do? That's a good question. I wish you had asked me this question. So, now let us see what other people think. His point is very much valid. Number one, the horizon may not be visible. Night time, no horizon. Secondly, the horizon may not be. So, see. It depends on how you define horizon. So horizon is defined as that line which is remaining almost flat and constant in the view. So either you have a horizon or you do not have it. Pilot cannot, but pilot cannot know sir, whether it is remain constant or not. If the pilot can see something that is horizontal and remaining horizontal, that is the horizon. If the pilot cannot, then the pilot flies by instrument. That is exactly what I was saying. Nighttime flight, flight over an ocean where the horizon is very far away or may not be available to you, flight in against a black background, there is no horizon now. In those conditions, the pilot flies by instruments because the instruments in the cockpit are independent of the horizon. There is a turn and bank indicator, there is a climb into VSI, vertical speed indicator. So you look at the vertical speed indicator, there should be no vertical speed visible, the ball should be in the center, that means you are flying horizontal and level, look at the altimeter, that should not be changing, that is all, that is the only thing available. But can you think of a situation, what could be the requirement for a military pilot to maintain steady horizontal flight? 
in which scenario do you expect this to happen for a military pilot pitch darkness no horizon can you think of a scenario in other words why is it important for us to study and to know about study horizontal flight so most of the armament that you launch especially when you are launching precision bombs which have to be guided it is desirable that there is no great change in the acceleration of the aircraft otherwise there have to be more corrections made in the aiming systems so study level flight is a very useful requirement even for military pilots not only for transport pilots okay just to move on and to increase the scope slightly let's look at now helicopters they also maintain study level flight yes or no we see them flying across our campus regularly generally they are in study level flight in a helicopter it's very important that the angle of the blade is continuously changed as it goes across otherwise what will happen is when the blade is advancing there is some air coming from the front okay so the advancing blade is going to get more relative velocity compared to the retreating blade so therefore across the rotation of the blade of a helicopter the angle has to be changed continuously so in the retreating position or when in the in the in the rearward motion the angle is going to come down in the forward motion the angle is going to go up and this is going to happen in the entire cycle so this particular change in the angle which is cyclic is um obtained by the swash plate mechanism you can read about it yourself and the collective is a collective or the total one but now suppose i want to move the helicopter forward then i cannot have the same angle in the all all the blades collectively because that will give me only vertical motion now what i want to do is i want to tilt the vector forward so for that i have to give a cyclic pitch so there is a cyclic pitch lever with that the angle of attack is changed cyclically so that the net force is forward and the helicopter can move forward so that's how the helicopters function okay now look at the balance of forces in the helicopter it is similar to that in the aircraft you have a drag force acting on the main rotor that is dm because it's a rotating blade you have a drag force acting on the body which is d and you have a drag force acting on the tail rotor which is t so the thrust that you produce by tilting the rotor blades the forward should be equal to dt plus dm plus d and the lift that you produce again rotor blades produce lift they have to be such that lift is equal to weight and now you may also again have moments because they may not be balanced at the same point so then the same trimming mechanisms have to be brought into place in some cases the the flat tail on the back that you see here this tail this tail actually helps it helps in creating this balance that is why we have a small horizontal tail fixed on a helicopter so that the moment can be continuously balanced but further trimming can be obtained by adjusting yeah this particular uh, diagram i have already explained to you few minutes ago this shows the working of the helicopter so this you can watch at leisure okay the last thing we will do today is to look at what happens to the thrust and the power required and available as you change the altitude of the aircraft so the conditions don't remain same at all altitudes so this is just a small uh, explanation very simple explanation so at low altitude at sea level you have many higher density of air so you have many more molecules of air available right at a higher level density becomes less so let's see the effect so as the height increases as the air density reduces and as the so the paradigm side drag also reduces 
at higher altitudes you have lower value of air density because density is lower the parasite drag is going to be lower. So, at sea level if you have a wing which has got some particular uh, relative flow you have some induced drag an arrow which is because it is being pushed back at the higher altitude you will find that you have to fly at a larger angle because density is less. So, what you have with you only is density and velocity the two things are available to you to change. So, let us see the effect. So, as the height increases, the air density reduces, lift reduces. So, therefore, you have to make a higher angle of attack to balance the same weight and therefore, the induced drag is going to go up because you are going to be at a higher angle of attack. So, if you look at now what happens at various altitudes. So, you are at some altitude 5000 meters. 10,000 meters. So, notice how the lines are changing. The thrust available line is coming down and the thrust required line is going up and tilting to the right. Okay. So, why does it tilt to the right? For that you have to do the numerical calculations which we will do in the tutorial probably to know how it changes. So, the net important point is that the gap between the power available the blue line sorry thrust available blue line and the thrust required black line this gap keeps reducing and the velocity at which this gap is maximum also keeps changing. So, at sea level you have that point, at a higher speed you have that point 10,000, 15,000. So, the numerical value of velocity at which the difference between the thrust available and thrust required is maximum increases or shifts as the altitude increases. So, you have to fly faster and faster to be at the maximum gap. So, now what will happen is can you imagine a time will come or an altitude will come at which these two lines will be intersecting only at one point. So, that velocity is the velocity that you need to fly if you want to fly at a particular altitude and that is the ceiling because after that the velocity after velocity after that the power the thrust required will be more than thrust available. So, you cannot. Now, the same thing we look at in the power pattern now. So, in the power pattern also if you see the power available is reducing. In the book by Anderson the power available was shown as a straight line and I said it is a simplification. This is the real story it is not a straight line it is a slightly curved line which we ignore and make it as an assumption that it is a straight line. So, you can see now that a similar story is happening. And once again the velocity at which the power gap is maximum is also increasing slightly. So, once again the time will come when the power available equal to power required you cannot go above that. Okay. So, this is just to tell you how the power uh, curve changes. So, one simple approximation will be that the power required at an altitude is the power required at sea level times the root of the density ratio. This is a simple approximation and many engines follow this particular uh, rate also. And once again from the same textbook I have copied and included here charts which are similar to what we saw. So, you can see that at lower altitude this is the power available, this is the power required the maximum occurs at this particular speed. At higher altitude sorry at, at sea level this is the value. So, at sea level you have a velocity and at altitude you have a velocity. So, 
the maximum velocity at which you fly it is a function of the difference between the power available and power required. And the same thing for propeller aircraft ok. Now this is something which I want to leave it to you for self study actually we already discussed it this is the ceiling, ceiling calculation ok.